folks, I've got some really interesting batteries on my bench right now. The creme de la creme of FPV racing and mini quad batteries. Check out these names. Turnigy Bolt, Mad Dog from Two Dog RC, Green Gorilla, SMC, Bonka, you name it. I have been testing these batteries and I'm going to tell you what the results are and which ones I think are good and which ones I think are bad. Let's get into it. Before we get into the results, I'm going to take just a moment, just a commercial moment, and say thank you very much to Two Dog RC who supplied this Mad Dog battery. That's that's Two Dog RC's house brand. And this is one of the places where you can get high volt batteries that you may not have known about. High, high volt batteries are often out of stock, so it's always good to know that there's vendors out there who you could potentially find stock. And this Bonka battery was supplied by ATs, AsiaTs.com, who hopefully will be a regular sponsor of the channel. Thank you to them as well. I also want to say that uh, if there's anything you're going to buy RC related and you can find it on the AT site, the link down below in the video description is a is an affiliate link for me. So anything you're going to buy that you decide to buy on ATs, go ahead and use that affiliate link. It'll give me a small kickback and I sure would appreciate it. All right, that's enough of that. I got that out of the way. Let's get into the results. Let me tell you what my test methodology was first. I think you're going to like this. Oh, and there's a rabbit. And there's a field of flowers. Sorry, hold on. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this is my test rig. These are 12 volt halogen lights, light bulbs. And I've got this awesome 200 amp blade switch that I use to start and break the circuit. And I've got my Turnigy Megameter, which measures the uh, all the data that we're gonna need. The Turnigy Megameter is not the most accurate or precise way of measuring this data, but I think it's good enough and it's consistent, okay? The other thing which is not pictured here is the AccuCell 680 watt charger, and that is what I use to measure the internal resistance of the batteries. Okay, so these internal resistance measurements that I'm gonna show you, uh, they're, don't take them as gospel, but they are consistent conditions, test conditions between each other. So they, I think they are a valid way of comparing these batteries to each other. Fair enough, okay. These internal resistance numbers I measured at storage and at full charge, basically fresh off the charger. So this is gonna be really the best case internal resistance you're gonna measure for the battery or that I would measure for the battery using my equipment under my test conditions. And this is just gives you a perspective on what the internal resistance is like at a lower state of charge. Internal resistance goes down as the battery gets fuller. Now it's important that I tell you another thing about these packs. Some of these packs are brand new from the factory, never flown. Some of these packs are almost new. These, these batteries I got for an earlier test and I actually haven't been flying them because I wanted to keep them fresh and undamaged for later tests. They have maybe five or 10 charges at most so I can consider them almost new and I consider these test results to be basically valid. Some people might even argue that these batteries are doing better because they're broken in. And I don't, uh, that's a topic for another day. This SMC pack is a, a, a daily flyer for me. It is well used, but still relatively new. You go back in my channel and search for my SMC uh, review video, you'll see about when I got this pack. So it might have 20 or 30 cycles on it perhaps still good condition i think and and still fair to test these results and this nanotech 45c battery it is it's it's i still fly it but it's basically old and dead so if this battery does badly in the test don't consider that to be any judgment on whether this is a good or a bad battery it's not a fair test i only included it because i was like look if any of these batteries don't kick the snot out of this one then they're bad because this battery is like as bad as it gets and the battery is still flyable, okay? So keep that in mind. I do not want anybody out going out there saying Joshua Bardwell said the Nanotech 1345C is a bad battery because it did poorly in these test results. This battery, this is not a new battery. It's not even a used battery. It's a dead battery. Now, to do this test, I just discharge the batteries at 20 amps. This is a 20 amp discharge rate. Here is the effective C rating for the battery size. I discharge at 20 amps and I discharge to 80% of the battery's capacity. So you can see that these numbers are the same, the milliamp hour numbers are the same, and also the discharge time is the same. Now that's that doesn't mean anything. I discharge the battery to the same milliamp hours at the same rate, so of course the times are the same. So the only thing that these are really here to show you is just to show you that the testing was consistent between different tests. These columns don't mean anything with regard to the batteries actual performance. So don't read too much into those, okay? What really matters for this testing, in my opinion, is the watt hours delivered 
a battery that delivers more watt hours over the same time and say milliamp hours means that it delivered more power. It was at a higher voltage longer. Okay. So this column is useful for comparing the batteries to each other. The next thing I want to show you is the voltage stop column. And that is what the voltage was on the battery under load just before I stopped the test. A battery with a higher stop voltage will be doing better than a battery with a lower stop voltage. The battery is, is it's sagging less. It's producing its rated capacity more. So, for example, you might see here that this battery was at 14.17 when, uh, when the test stopped. Now, that battery did produce 80% of its rated capacity, but it had to go down to 14.17 to get there. Whereas this battery produced 80% of its rated capacity and was at 14.35. Okay, so both of these batteries, is this, are these batteries rated accurately? Well, they both output 80% of their rated capacity, but one was at a higher voltage and one was at a lower voltage, but they're clearly not the same. Here's the resting voltage, which the battery was allowed to rest and come back to, you know, rest for a minute and come back to whatever it was. And again, a battery with a higher resting voltage is going to have done better than a battery with a lower uh, resting voltage. And then here's the sag which is how much the battery was sagging under load. And that, remember, this is only a 20 amp load. This is not a very a demanding load of these batteries, which should be able to do far more than this, even the little 45C nanotech. So if you look at the sag, a battery with less sag is gonna be doing better. And then we have the temperature of the battery at the end of the test. And obviously lower temperature is better, higher temperature is worse. So now that you understand how to interpret the results, let's get what the actual results are. We can start by looking at the battery's prices, and I've helpfully labeled things as red or green when I think they stand out. So for example, the Mad Dog battery from Two Dog RC is 40 bucks. It is $6 more, $10 more than most of the batteries in this test, and this battery would have to really perform very well in order to justify that price. The battery is also 161 grams, which makes it the heaviest battery in the test. Now, I split these out by size. Here's the 1800s and the 1100s, and these are the 1300s. And I've got this Green Gorilla 1400 in here as well. And the reason I did that is because weight-wise, I don't know how Green Gorilla gets a 1400 at 150 grams when everybody else is doing 1300, but there you go. Since you would put this on the same copter that you would put any of these other batteries on, I threw it in here, even though it's not technically the same size battery. So this Mad Dog battery is the most expensive and is the heaviest. So is it worth it? Well, if we look at the internal resistance, I've got this sorted by the internal resistance, lower internal resistance at the top. We can see it has the second lowest internal resistance, and that's very good. And if we continue to look through the test results, we can see that its stopping voltage was also the highest. That means it's the best, and it had a very low sag. It didn't have the exact lowest sag, but... It had very close, and if you'll see, it, it recovered to 15 volts even after discharging to 80%, whereas this battery, the Bolt, the Turnigy Bolt 1300, only recovered to 14.88. So the Turnigy Bolt had less sag, but it was lower overall, and I'm not sure that's better. In temperature, uh, it was also one of the lowest, it was in fact the lowest temperature in the test. So this Mad Dog battery is the most expensive, but so far, it really seems to be shining in this test. The next battery up, we'll look at the Bolt 1300. Now that one is only $26 compared to 40 for the Mad Dog. And if we look at this rating, 154 grams, so it's significantly lighter. Well, six, seven grams. Uh, well, maybe you don't think that matters. Um, maybe it doesn't. 21 uh, milliohms internal resistance, so almost the same as the Mad Dog. And as we saw, 14.35 uh, stop voltage, very close, 14.88 8 resting voltage, and half a volt of sag, 108 degrees versus 106 degrees. So between the Bolt 1300 and the Mad Dog, so far, the Bolt 1300 seems like the winner just based on price. The Mad Dog seems to outperform it slightly, but at a significantly greater price. Now, it will be very interesting to see whether the Mad Dog uh, steps ahead in, in a higher current test. Remember, we were only drawing 20 amps here. So if we draw 40 or 60 amps, the Mad Dog may start to shine. We shall see. That test is going to be for another day, by the way. The Green Gorilla is very interesting because it's rated at 1,400 milliamp hours. That's 100 milliamp hours more than everything else. It's only 150 grams, 
And we could ask the question, was that in fact an honest milliamp hour rating? You can see we pulled extra milliamp hours from it and it lasted three minutes, 29 seconds, whereas all the other batteries, we stopped the test at three minutes, 16 or 15 or 14 seconds, right? So it lasted about an extra 15 seconds. And so we, it does look like this uh, 1400 milliamp hour rating is honest. It delivered 16.9 watt hours, which had delivered more power. Its resting voltage, or its stop voltage was 14.23 and its resting voltage was 14.94. So those are acceptable numbers. I feel like I feel like those are acceptable numbers. It did experience more sag than the, the top two, and that's due to its slightly higher internal resistance. And its temperature was notably higher, and again, that's due to its higher internal resistance. The guideline that I looked up for this test was that a LiPo will be best if kept under 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so these lipos felt a little bit past warm into hot, especially these two that were getting close to 125. So, so this 118 degrees is definitely, it's, you've been pushing the battery at 118 degrees. So the Green Gorilla, uh, given that it is a 1400 milliamp hour for 150 grams, it seems like you're almost getting 100 extra milliamp hours for free if you're willing to pay the money. Performance of the battery was acceptable. This SMC 37 amp true spec. Oh, this is a controversial battery. People out there say this is, oh, it's so good. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And uh, in my in my last testing, I didn't find it to be bad, but I didn't find it to blow me away either. How did it do in our test? Now, bear in mind before we go on that the batteries we've been looking at until now are all high volts. This is a standard LiPo. So when we look at this battery, we will find that it gave significantly fewer watt hours because it was at a lower voltage throughout the whole test 15.4 versus 16.9 15.6 and 15.8 okay so that's just because this is a lipo and these are high volts why did i put the lipos in with the high volts i don't know i had a lot of batteries to test you're smart people you can figure it out okay so 15.4 watt hours it was resting at 14.82 and it sagged 6.65 volts Let's compare that to this brand new from the factory Bonka 1370C, 75C, whatever battery. 14.17, 14.88 with 0.71 volts of sag. Well, that's actually pretty impressive. And how did it do for watt hours? 15.3 versus 15.4. Uh, well, I'm really sorry to find that result because I, uh, I have a sponsor link for you for the Bonka battery. And uh, it sure looks like for $29, you could go buy the Bonko. For $19, you could buy the SMC. And it certainly seems to be doing about as well. So uh, this certainly seems to support the claim that SMC are pretty good batteries for the money. Or maybe it supports the claim that the Bonka 70C is full of it. The 70C rating is just overrated. And the $29 is paying for marketing more than anything else. I will be very, very interested, again, to see how these results pan out at higher current draws, 40 and 60 amps. I was going to do that for this test, but unfortunately, I needed more light bulbs than I had. I didn't have enough light bulbs to get 40 and 60 amps, so I'm going to have to put that off to another day. And this Nanotech, uh, we barely even need to look at it. It's, look how bad it did. It's at the bottom. It got really hot. It sagged a lot, and it didn't recover very much. How did the 1100 do? Now, unfortunately, I didn't have any other 1100s to compare them to. This battery is much lighter than the others. Internal resistance is higher, and that's normal because it's a smaller capacity battery. Delivering 80% of its rated capacity, it went down to 14.11 volts. That's, that's not spectacular. Uh, I, I call about 14.2, and it recovered to 14.88 with 0.77 volts of sag. It got 126 degrees under this test. Now, it, that's very interesting to me that these batteries got so hot in the test because I, you fly your battery, and you probably think, oh, I'm probably pulling 20 amps most of the time, right? But your battery doesn't come down at 126 uh, degrees. It does suggest to me that these con constant discharge tests are more stressful on the battery than a test where you're going 25 here, 15 there, 10 there, 50 here. So, uh, so, so that's interesting. I'm sure I've never had a battery come down at 126 degrees, probably not even over 100 degrees, but I could be wrong about that. So let's sum up then. The Mad Dog battery is the most expensive and heavier but it does do slightly better in the testing so if you're willing to pay a premium and a little bit of extra weight it seems like the best of the 1300s the bolt battery 
is almost as good, just barely quite not as good for a much lower price and a little bit less weight. So it seems like a solid pick. The Green Gorilla 1400 isn't quite as good as those two, but it gives you 100 more milliamp hours for no extra weight and a little bit of extra price. Your call whether those extra 100 milliamp hours are worth it. Remember that translates not only to additional flight time, but also to less sag during punches because your C rating is effectively slightly lower. Your call on that one. The SMC 37 amp true spec did just as well as the Bonka uh, 70C for $10 cheaper, $19 versus $29. It remains to be seen whether that will continue to be true on the higher discharge tests, but certainly if you look at their internal resistance numbers, it suggests that it will. So it doesn't look like you should buy the Bonka. It looks like you should buy the SMC instead. RIP my affiliate link. The Green Gorilla 1100 battery didn't do very well when discharged to 80% of its rated capacity. It got super hot and it had a relatively low stop voltage in my opinion. I think this battery is still a good battery. I have people who have flown it tell me that they like it. It has good punch, good, good output power, and, and the lightweight makes the copter handle well, especially smaller copters. I think this battery would be an okay battery if you just treat it like a 1000 milliamp hour or maybe a 950 milliamp hour and don't run it all the way down to 80% of its rated capacity. I just It feels to me like its rating is just a little bit ambitious. Finally, the 1800 milliamp hours did very well, low internal resistance and, and a good stop voltage and good resting voltage. I think they will really start to shine as we get into the higher discharge tests uh, where the other batteries, the internal resistance will really start to matter. Uh, these batteries didn't look like they did that much better, except of course that they flew longer, of course. But I think as you get into the, the higher discharge tests, the, their increased ability to provide current will really start to show. All right, so that's the roundup of these batteries at a 20 amp discharge rate, which I feel like the 20 amp discharge rate is just kind of setting a baseline. It's the jog before the sprint. If you can't do this, you're not gonna like what's coming next. And what's coming next is I'm gonna find a way to put something like 45C through these batteries. And I'm gonna suck the life out of them down to 80% capacity or until they cry uncle, whichever comes first. And that's gonna come up, but I gotta get some more light bulbs first. In the meantime, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's been educational and happy fun.